especially for our students. It has allowed us to attend classes online without any interruption and even for uh, assignments and presentations. They have a very good feature. We have special for our students. It has allowed us so to attend classes we have not missed online anything. without any interruption. The only thing we and can even for uh, is the assignments and presentations. So we have, uh, they have a very good feature. We have special for our students. It has allowed us so to attend classes we have not missed online anything. without any interruption. So far, as part of academic issues, we are up to date with all that we were supposed to capture. Uh, in the semester year that just ended when coronavirus hit us. So as a whole, I would encourage anybody who is looking for an institution of higher learning to think of International Leadership University. It is the place to be. Thank you for joining us on the ILU Leadership Channel. Remember to check out all of our transformational courses on leadership. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, whatever the case may be. Good afternoon. Good, good evening. evening. Good evening. Hello. Thank you for joining in time. We're just setting up uh, our streaming on YouTube. There it is, ready now. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, whatever the case okay. may be. <laughs> How do you go forward? The journey on If you try swiping. Just a minute. This one. And this, this is the one. No? It, is, uh, it was that one. Ish. So what happened? It, uh, You are muted, Dr. Ajenga. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I was just asking those who are not presenting to mute themselves. And thank you so much for making it in time. Uh, more people are joining. We do expect quite a few more. And in case you drop off and are unable to rejoin, there will be... Um, there's a there, there's a YouTube link. It will also be shared here. I believe Pauline shared it with you. So our moderator this evening is Dr. Heglon Kitawi. My name is Beatrice Hamati Jenga. I serve at the International Leadership University, um, supporting the areas of uh, planning, resource mobilization, and institutional development. Welcome. Over to you, Dr. Heglon Kitawi. Dr. Kitawi is our director for the Transforming Leadership Center, which is our unit that offers short courses and professional training um, outside of the academic programs. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Beatrice Jenga, and even for that uh, very warm introduction. We 
want to begin and we begin with a word of prayer. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you. We say thank you for this time together. We say thank you that we are able to be on this platform. We say thank you, dear Lord, for the International Leadership University. We say thank you for all who have been able to organize this event. And dear Lord, for everyone also who is participating. We ask, oh dear Lord, that we feel your mighty presence with us. And indeed, that you'll be able to be with us. And dear Lord, we pray for all who will be presenting. Also pray for the equipment. And dear Lord, that you will be with us. Oh, we pray this living and trusting in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. I want to welcome you once again to the International Leadership University. And this is um, the beginning of um, our series towards the stewardship uh, week weekend that we'll be having uh, next week. And we are having a, a series of events that... Um, go towards uh, that uh, time that we'll have together. And I believe that uh, all of you, or most of you will be able to join us, even as uh, more information is being shared. At this time, I want to, intro uh, to introduce our Vice Chancellor, Professor Timothy Kirohi, who will uh, Introduce a little about, uh, of course, the university. He normally says he's the chief marketer of the university, which 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 is uh, right rightly so, and he's also the one who will introduce Mr. Simon, uh, who Mr. Simon Kimani Kirudi, who is uh, uh, sharing um, um, today. So welcome, uh, Professor. Uh, thank you very much and uh, good evening and welcome to all of you who are joining us uh, from various locations, maybe across the country, some maybe even outside, uh, since uh, we had shared with some of our alumni who live in various nations of Africa and beyond. We are very honored to have you, like my colleagues have said, and uh, mine will be just to briefly share with you about the university, which is hosting this event. Kindly do mute all of us as you join, uh, so that the others are able to enjoy the speakers as they come to us. Uh, before we invite the speakers, I'll just tell you a little bit about the university. International Leadership University has been in existence for 43 years. We are not a new institution, even though maybe our name, is new name is not, of course, very old. Many of us know us by our older name, NIST. And uh, our uh, campus uh, has been in Kilimani, we're currently working on a new campus, uh, building a new campus in Kitengela uh, on a 50-acre piece of land that will be the seat of the university. In relation to, of course, the usual facilities uh, for students, it's, we also envision a leadership retreat and, uh, you know, center there and a research center that will be able to archive values and other things that we believe are important uh, for the growth of our nation. Um, I would also like to ask that maybe those who are uh, can see a number of AI, um, you know, recorders uh, that kindly do uh, allow us to take to to do that so that we can allow more people. So I'd like to request that all the AI, the you know, uh, whatever, because you're going to be recording uh, these and we'll be able to share with all who have registered. So I'd like to request that those who have put on AI gadgets kindly let's let's uh, please remove them because we'll be able to share a recording of this event uh, with everyone who has registered. That way we'll be able to accommodate more people on this platform. And uh, also I'd like to just mention that, that briefly we have three schools at the International Leadership University, all of which work with our, mo our motto, our mandate to develop leaders of integrity for the holistic transformation of Africa and beyond. We believe that the missing ingredient in the development of our nation, as we look at our 60-year history, 61 now, is really uh, just values, having the right value system. We are blessed with natural resources, with good people, educated people, all the other you know, components for national development. But our value system has increasingly deteriorated. 
Uh, we have uh, people who, you know, who don't believe it is possible to do the right thing and be successful. And so cutting corners, doing the wrong things, things like that. So there are three things that we seek to uh, attain through our schools, then the development of character, which is measured by integrity, as I mentioned. Then, of course, competencies. All our courses are accredited by the Commission for University Education, our degree courses. And then we are, of course, also in, in endeavor to have people who have contextual relevance and transformation. So we don't just teach in the classrooms. We have various community engagements. In fact, uh, the week after this, uh, the coming one on the 29th, we'll be having our team going to Marsa Bit to spend some time there looking at how what they are learning at ILU uh, engages and uh, on the real on the ground and can be able to help. Uh, to, to bring about uh, development, transformation in the community so that people don't have to wait until they graduate to get a personal experience, but earlier. What, uh, so the three schools, leadership and governance, is becoming our flagship. We teach uh, leadership and governance from certificate to PhD. We also have theology and Christian ministries, our traditional area, uh, which we have had for many years. And uh, we also have certificate all the way to PhD. And then counseling psychology with all the issues of mental health that are, that are becoming uh, very critical in our society. We are helping equip people from uh, certificate levels up to the master's level. Uh, we'll soon be developing the PhD program for that area as well. So some of the areas that are, you know, some of the reasons maybe why you should choose ILU, uh, you know, we, of course, you know, we are, you know, we have many other universities that are maybe some of which are the same values and vision, but others which are different. One is that, as I mentioned, we are very strong on values and integrity. So if you want uh, training that will not only be good for your head, but also good for your heart, so to speak, and your hands, as I mentioned, being able to engage, then ILU is a good place to choose. Then in the social sciences arena where we are mainly majoring in, that's why the area will stay in, even in the new setup by the competence-based education. Social sciences, you can transition from different areas, um, you know, uh, to be able to move uh, regardless of what you took for earlier studies. So like, for example, my background training is in engineering, but when I found my love for leadership, I was able to transition to leadership without having to go back and do another degree, first degree, but I could go on to the master's and PhD. So you can be able to do that. And also we allow for credit transfer for those who would be interested transfer some credits either from another institutions or relevant programs, of course, um, if they meet certain threshold, they have to be good credits. Then, of course, we also allow payment of fees in uh, about three installments, half, and then uh, you can organize the other two, because most people, of course, receive their earnings on a monthly basis. We also have international staff. Kindly mute, Yinka. Uh, we, 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 we have, um, you know, the faculty as well as the student body is truly international, as our name goes, International Leadership University. So you'll be able to get experiences from students from other backgrounds, as well as faculty uh, who are very committed and teach from various, uh, you know, nations and various standpoints to be able to enrich your learning in this uh, global time. So without further ado, allow me to just uh, say that we also have the short courses that I'm sure Dr. Kitawi will mention a, a little later, which share some of the same DNA with the longer courses. In fact, this particular uh, program that we'll be offering tonight, uh, working with our facilitator, we would like to set it up and I'm sure they'll be announcing the dates. Uh, so for those who'd like to take more time, because uh, what you are getting tonight is just a, a short introduction, what you may call Kionjo you know, just to help you uh, get a taste of uh, this area that's very, very important of personal financial planning, investments, and also retirement planning. So without that, with that to just mention that I'm here with a number of our faculty members, uh, Deputy Vice Chancellor, Dr. Beatrice Jenga, Amati Jenga already introduced herself, and a number of others that may be in the audience uh, together with faculty, and uh, we are very, very honored. I can see a number of faculty as well. Thank you very much. We are very honored to have you and uh, to host you together with some of the members of our governance organs. Um, Mr. Simon Kimani uh, will be bringing you up now. And uh, I met him a few weeks ago. Um, uh, when uh, we visited um, you know, one of the churches uh, just to pre make a presentation, I was actually asked to talk about the place you know, in terms of the transformation of education. Uh, what do you know for the church, which is focusing on issues of uh, how to influence that sector with values? And uh, he offered that, uh, you know, he would have something that is, is related in his educational space, 
and that also is that is value based that will be able to help people in this very very important area. I was very impressed with the fact that although he is a CPA, he is a certified public accountant. Uh, he followed his passion, something always very important, and so he's been more in this area of financial planning. Now, uh, for done this in a number of countries, more than twenty nations, so he brings to us a wealth of experience. Uh, together with the team that you'll be working on tonight. So without further ado, allow me to now welcome Mr. Simon Kimani, CPA. Simon Kimani, please do come on board together with your team. And we look forward to being able to, uh, you know, listen to it from you. And then later on, I'm sure we'll have a chance to interact uh, through the chat on some of the things that you'll be sharing. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you, Prof, for that very good introduction. Um, it is a real joy just to be in this meeting today. And I would like just to share part of what I have. To me tonight, uh, I want just to, uh, just to put a few things that uh, we are a team, not only me alone, we have a team of other three, especially uh people who are well articulate some of the specialized areas like retirement who happen to be with me here dr momani and he'll be able to say hello i also have two other people who are specialized basically in money market areas because that is part of the biggest problem in the savings is actually in that area and also part of the risk mitigation which has basically i have uh my very able friend in the insurance sector. So it will be a presentation that will come up. I can see you're saying my face is not very visible. I think, is that now okay? Uh, and that better. will be able to give, now it's better. Now I'll be able now to articulate some of the very critical areas in financial management. As, as you are aware, as this is just but a curtain raiser for what is coming up in, uh, in the other weekend of 27, that is the Family Stewardship Weekend, whereby basically is to empower all the people who will be coming. Some special skills on how they can be better stewards in terms of financial resources that God has given unto them. And today we will therefore just be able just to just to touch on a few things. It may not, this is a whole course which we, are being, which we are preparing, but of course we'll be able to come up well and we'll be able to share more details as we go up. At the end of the tail end, we shall have questions and answers. And because we may not be able to respond to all the questions, in every presentation for each part, there'll be actually a specialized email that we have set aside where you'll be able to take a note and you can be able to issue or send us an email with all the queries you require in all the different areas. Then we can have a very personalized attention. And that is what we need to do. Now I can ask my fellow colleague, Dr. Mumani, to say hello, even as I do the sharing of the part. Go ahead. Hello, this is Dr. Uh, Thomas Mumani, an expert in retirement. I'm sure we shall be sharing a lot about retirement because currently that could be one of the areas that is really concerning this generation. It's a, a topic that has always been ignored, but comes a time that you cannot no longer ignore your age. You cannot ignore the fact that you one day have to walk out of that office what shall we be doing? And that's actually what we do at the Retirement Academy. We take you through the stages on how you retire. Welcome and be sharing after this. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yes, yes. you can see it. Yes, you can see it. Excellent. Uh, I want just to make a quick presentation, and the others I'll be able to introduce them as we go along. Today, we want to address ILU fraternity and partners. 
at basically on personal finance and there there is a bit of a, a bit of uh, my introduction which have already been done by this is so I'll not emphasize on that but I can tell that I have been able have a privilege to have consulted with the World Bank USA uh, IFAD and those many other private equity funds in the last 20, in about 25 countries and different roles in different places and therefore in my introductory remarks, this is the theme for this particular webinar, is basically to bring to you the fourth edition of the Family Steward Weekend, coming up on this coming 27th of April 2024, from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. at Kilimani Campus. We therefore ask all members who are in participant this day, that they should actually be able to be part and parcel of this particular uh, this particular event, and therefore the focus of this particular event is the cut and razor, I'd say, which will focus on equipping individuals and families with the tools for excellent financial stewardship, legacy building, personal finance, investment, retirement planning. Of course, through the lenses of the scriptures. But this webinar will serve two purposes. One, it will serve the cut and razor for what is coming on 27th, as you have, um, you have already advertised when you have a flyer. But also, it is also to bring to your notice that the whole short course on personal finance planning, savings, investment, insurance, and the retirement. And this is the partnership that you are building because this is just snippets of whatever happens. And therefore, you don't want to miss the 10 weeks course that you'll come so that you can be able to benefit fully. The other aspect we have already discussed as making financial decisions in the midst of certainties and opportunities yes. available to benefit ourselves and our families. You will notice that we are living in a society all in times that are very difficult times. And part of this, financial challenges have been a key area. And therefore, when we are dealing with the financial planning, saving, investment, and risk management, it is basically what determines how well we are able to navigate the challenges of life. And this is part of the things that has never been taught. In fact, most people know how to make money. But no school or anybody who is taught how to spend it. And that's why those who have, a, have knowledge about it, they are able to make a lot of difference. But for those who do not have and their majority, then you'll find that they still have struggling financially, despite they have been having earning two huge sums of money. The other aspect is that the others who have already planning, but the execution bit of it is still wanting. And therefore, those are the people that you want to remind that planning is also not enough, but taking action on those plans is critical. And this is what we'll be able to address today. In financial planning specifically, there is, I have put around the, the, the five whys and one how, H. And this is what, why, where, when, Home and how. And this is part of the things that you would like us to go through. Part of that, what is your financial goal? Statistics shows that most of the people, almost 75% of the people do not have a written goal at all, not only in financial, even other things. Like even having the business the, 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 the other, for example, you'll be able to say, how much do you want to say? For what reason and how much it is. So what is it? And part of the practical aspect of this is for you to understand how do you make your financial goal? How much money do I need? What is my success future look like? And those all those must be broken into goal. What is my family financial goal, for example? Career growth goals. You are... Uh, career growth, wealth building, all those are different goals and they have implications in finance. 
The other thing is, is why should you have the goals in the first place? And this is we shall be seeing the things why we should have the goals is because there are certain uncertainties. There are certain things that we are not sure, but will drive us and we'll be able to just to dive into it. Then the other aspect why we should have goal, we have issues on cash flows. We need to find out where is where are we getting the money? We know what different pockets. Where do you save? Where do you invest? Where do you insure yourself? So we want also to understand what are the instruments that are available for us where we can be able to do the saving. Then when do we review our progress? Do you have, for example, on a weekly basis, on monthly basis, or quarterly basis, that you are able to tell how well am I doing according to the plans? If I had said I wanted to save 100,000 in the next one year, where, I, where am I? How am I doing? And then the other aspect for planning is whom do you seek advice from? It is important that when the car breaks down, you go to a mechanic. When you are when you're sick, you go to a doctor. But when you have financial problems, whom do you go to consult? When you have this kind of money, whom do you seek advice from so that you can be able to take where you're supposed to? And finally, how will you know you are on track? How what is the strategy? Will you make sure that that at least uh, this is how I'm being. I had planned for five years. This is where I am on this financial goal. And therefore, this gives you an overall of what I'll be able to cover. Now I'll go into the nitty gritty. Part of that is that part of the financial goals that we need to think about is our physical wellness. And you know, physical wellness have have a lot of implication in our own finances. For example, when you are sick, you can't work. When you are sick, most likely you'll be able to have to seek medical advice. And therefore, goals on physical wellness is a critical. Indirectly, it impacts on finances. Look at the mental wellness. How well are you able to make the right decisions? And when you are having people with the issues on mental issues, that is where you find you cannot be able to work, you cannot make the right decisions, and therefore it is good. Part of the mentor is also being knowledgeable. What kind of books are you reading? What kind of new information are you able to process? That is also part of the goals that you need to put in. The other one is actually the emotion or the emotional intelligence. Anger, how do we control some of these things? Anger, irritation, all this also affects our productivity. It affects how we relate with the people. It affects even our income. And therefore, you need also to have the goals in this. And finally, you have the spiritual, which is at the core. Spiritually, which is actually gives you the purpose. Why you should be, why are you here? And so those are some of the goals. But why do we what why do we need to plan? We plan because there are certain things that are really pushing us. And part of us are now what you call, I'm calling them financial dilemmas. That, for example, where you have the family got provision, you have you're working, but you are struggling to even to put table on the uh, money in the table. Where you have family without provision, you'll be sure that family cannot be able to go because a hungry person is a very angry person. And therefore, part of the planning is to make sure that your family have provisions. The other why we should actually have the goals is because our children need to go to school. And this is one reason I've seen so many cases in Kenya where people are actually looking for Harambe. So what are your financial goals regarding the, uh, regarding the school fees? How education of your children will be, will be financed? The other aspect, a very interesting thing that we'll be able to hear from one of our, uh, our speakers tonight is on the retirement. And part of the retirement is basically retirement without a future income. And that is really sad when you realize that spaces you cannot be able to you cannot be able to retire decently. I have seen many cases where 
People retire, they depend on their children. They become a burden to the children. They start cursing their children because they have not been helped. But even themselves, they are struggling with their own issues. And through this webinar, we'll be able to be given just how do we make sure we retire when we still have time. The other key aspect is death without dependence provision. We have seen risks everywhere. We have just had a very fresh incident that happened for the, great, for the crash that took place where we lost quite a number of people. And there are so many people who are actually dying prematurely because of accidents and there. And they leave fully what you call the provisions of the dependents completely dependent on others. There is something we can do. And that's why we are bringing this so that we can be able to plan better. And this is now part of the key things that we need to think about. The other things why we should actually have the financial goals in place is because we also need to know where are we getting the money from. On those, you can be able to see those green, green boxes, the investment interest, income, summary pension, uh, share dividends, and rental income. Those are different streams of income. The red ones, they are basically, you have a loan to service, you have everyday bank, you need to make payments, you need to buy this asset, but you need to manage. How do you manage the money? And this is where we are, why we should be able to do the financial planning. It is because we need to know where are we getting the money from. If you are only earning a salary and you are struggling, maybe this is the high time you think about what are other streams of income can I tap into? What are my skills? Can I be able to run some, for example, I can be able to get royalties. If I'm a good singer, can I produce a song and sell? If I have some little money, can I sell on a rental uh, apartment? And this will be able to help us to manage the cash flows. That's why we need the financial planning. Then in financial planning, then you'll be able to say, you need to set money aside. Remember, we are saying that there is what we are consuming now, but we also need to think about tomorrow. And part of those things, I have actually put things that you need, for example, a decent retirement, which you'll cover. Perhaps you also need to settle. You need to settle your family. You need to build a family house or a decent place where you can live in. You also, perhaps you have worked so hard, you need to take a vacation. And also you have the college. And therefore, that is why you should actually save money. And if you have not been doing it, perhaps this is the high time you should reflect and be able to say, among all these that you are offering, what have I put in all these places? But remember, it's never too late to begin because one, the journey of one person begins. Uh, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step. There is a Japanese saying that the best time to have planted a tree was 20 years ago. But now you can be able to say the best next time is now. Therefore, you can begin now to start in the right direction. And it doesn't matter even if you're already at 60. And the retirement person will tell us that it's all is not lost. There's something we can do. Then we say, where do, you, where, where do we need to save? Most of them, most people also think it's only keeping the bank. And sometimes it's very difficult to do in the bank. And therefore, there are several places where you can do the, uh, you can do the saving. And I have sampled a few of them. These guys, some of them, we are already partners. We are already partnering in this. Like Standard Investment Bank, which is regulated by Capital Market Authority. It is one of the areas. We have Jubilee Insurance, and we'll have an insurance person, a Jubilee Insurance person, who will be presenting shortly on this, on what is available. We have ICA Money Market. We have Brita Money Market. We have CIC. We have NWL. And there are about 30 different money market funds that are in this market. And therefore, my call for you is make sure at least you be able to read. All this information is available online. And you are able to educate yourself and see, including circles. These are all opportunities where to save. And therefore, when we do this, I have, as I had requested specifically, a friend from uh, Jubilee Asset Management Money Market Fund, just to give us in 10 minutes, just to take us through 
what these money markets look like. They are one of the largest players in the market, and they can easily be able to tell us how, how it is done, so that at the end of this day, everybody have an idea on where they can invest. Abdul, are you around there? Are you there? Abdul? Hello? Are we there? Prof, can somebody tell me whether we are together? Yes, we are together. Yes, we, we are here. Yes, we we are here. I wanted to ask yes, whether there was my colleague called Abdul. Abdul, is you there? Anyway, if it's not there, let me take you through this part of as an example. Uh, Jubilee Asset Management, it is one of the key fund markets that are available currently offering 15.2% effective annual yield. And they have two, they have two different uh, units where there is a fixed income and there is one that is not fixed. And this is how it goes. Then it has what you call a small updates on the industry. According to the money markets, funds, are you there? Abdul? Anyway, that's fine. Then that you can be able to see the diaspora remittances alone in 2023 that came to Kenya that was that came through the money market was 670 billion shillings. The unit trust funds in Kenya alone in the last six years have gone to the tune of 123 billion. And the growth projection now, it is actually heading to 240 billion. And you can be able to see how it has been growing. Meaning that there are people who already had this information. And these are the people, me and you, and others who are actually investing in money market and you can see the volumes of money we are talking about expecting 2024 it'd be about 240 billion will actually be transacted through this now you may realize that under jubilee asset management you may find that this collective investment scheme which is known as mutual funds and they are basically managed on behalf of investors by professional fund managers that's why we, we appreciate different skills, that there are people who are better placed actually to invest the money and they pull for everybody and everybody get a return. Investors have a common goal, either to earn an interest or a dividend or a capital gain. But in most cases, performance of the fund is also dependent on the market value of instruments which you have used. And these are different instruments in the market, which will be able now, during the course, short course, we shall have a very detailed analysis of what money market funds are, what bond fixed income funds are, equity funds, balanced funds, special funds. All these have different features. And you can easily, including real estate investment trust. These are different opportunities for investment. And because this information has already been only for a few, that's why we have taken this that we should be able to let you know. Then we also, we have said that this money market fund can be used for different financial objectives. One, you can actually be able to use an emergency. For this, sorry, an emergency cash. Then you also have the savings for school fees. You can also do for savings for a holiday. You can do savings for medical or life in premiums. You can do savings for a project and saving for business income. Therefore, this is a good media for savings. And that's why we need to learn more about all these instruments, how it works in our short course, and it will be able to be very useful to you. The other aspects why, why part of this, and most of them by large, these are common characteristics to all money market funds, is that one, there's a good returns above the bank fixed rates or savings account. 
That's why it's going up to about 15%. Interest is compounded monthly. If you don't want to retrieve that income, you can actually be able to, re to revolve it. Then there is, of course, stability and flexibility. You can actually get the cash when you want it back. Has an option to compound it. There is also different funds. You can be able to say this fund is doing better, therefore I can move money to the other one. Client can withdraw interest any time. In fact, this interest is computed on daily basis. There is a capital preservation. That means you don't lose your money that you have already, uh, you have already invested. And main difference between all these others, bonds, they are of long term, and the other ones are basically for minimum uh, three months. This is a small table that shows if you, for example, invest 100,000 shillings in money market, that is, it will be able to give about monthly in, in gross income of about 1,228. But then, it's a government mandatory that every interest income must have 15% with the holding tax. And then for that means if you have 100,000, you can actually earn you 16,000 in a year. And this is part of what net is 13. And it gives you all the way up to 100 million. That if you had 100 million somewhere, you don't want actually to labor much or anything else, you can, it can give you 13, uh, about 13 million shillings every month, every year for, for that money, for just allowing it somebody to do it for you. So even as you age, sometimes you don't want to take very risky investments. You just put the money that you have and you'll be able to get a guaranteed return. Now, what is called for action for this is basically for any assistance or query or clarification on how to sign up or how to begin if you think you have not had any account in money market. And this is the place where you can begin to say, you can actually now be able to take it up. Indicate your name, your telephone number in that, and you have provided a particular email address. This will be able now to be addressed by the people in the money market as savings at giftedholdings.co.ke. Please take note of that particular number. Savings at giftedholdings.co. When you write an email, say what you are interested in and you'll be able to be given the right information so that you can be able to start taking action of what you have not done. Or you can be able to have given the numbers there. One of the guys who was to present, I think he has been locked out. You can reach out on that number 0780 2839, or you can reach up to me on 720-91631 and we'll be able to help you. This is for the people who would like to start saving right away and they would like to open an account. I don't know whether there is any other any question for on that before we can proceed. I want to be sure that we are together or whether I'm too fast or I slow down. Can I get some feedback, please? Uh, thank you so much. My name is uh, Walter Jaoko. Thank you very much for the presentation. I keep on wondering, uh, for money market, do you, after one year, do you roll over the interest? Uh, so is it a compounded interest? So for example, I give you one million. Yes. Every month you're giving me this interest. After one yes. year, do I continue just earning one interest on the 1 million or they add all the interest that I've accumulated so now the interest is based on my total? Yes, it is It is all right. It's compounded. It will now be 1 million plus the interest that you earn. That is now what you earn for the next year. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. Excellent. Uh, in the interest of time, because we want just to make sure we run through, then we have the questions. The other one is basically uh, for investments. And the investment, I want just to give a small, uh, a small example of the greatest investor in the world. There, everybody knows about Warren Buffett. He is currently worth about 85.9 billion US dollars. I don't know, that amounts to almost a trillion. 
This is what I found out in one of the records written in uh, one of the psychology of money. Warren Buffett started investing at age 10. You can be able to see how far the financial information began. And that's why it is not too late to start even inducting our children on financial literacy. At age 30, Warren Buffett was worth $1 million. That we are talking about 100 million Kenya shillings equivalent. At age 50, because of compounding interest, it had grown to $1.4 billion net worth of his wealth. But between 50 and 60, because of compounding interest, his wealth had grown up to $85.4 billion. Now, what's the secret? It's long term. That means all investments must be long term. It must be consistent. And it will also enjoy the compound interest. Therefore, if we are, you find people have actually built wealth and legacy, it is something that has taken over the years. It's not a dash. It's not a pyramid scheme. It is something that is systematic. You must have a long point view. And I wanted just to touch briefly on types of different investment. One is that key is important that see yourself as an investor. Every time you don't see yourself as an investor, you will never be one. And so what do you do to begin with? You first begin investing in yourself. And you'll be able to see what investing in yourself, it means reading very good, relevant books. Like, if, uh, like uh, uh, Kiyosaki has a very good book on investment. You read, there's also a small book that is called The Richest Man in Babylon. It's called by George's class on The Richest Man. He teaches on five laws of money which will also be covered during our short session. And he talks about the first thing is you pay yourself. And that is part of the reason why you need to invest in yourself. The others, you need to invest in others. You need to be part and parcel of clubs and associations. You have heard of sports clubs. People invest themselves in relationship. In those in circles, those who are in chamans, you invest to one another. That is how you also grow. The other aspect is business. You others are very, not everybody is talented in doing a business, but you need, you can invest in a business. You can invest also in what you call assets and financial vehicles that you maximize returns. Like for example, real estate is exactly now part of key investment areas. The other thing you could just invest in good ideas. Everything we have, including a table, a house, a pen, all of it began as an idea. So if you have a good idea, you can actually monetize it and become an investment. And what are not indicated there is investment in government securities. You have heard of treasury bonds. You have heard of treasury bills. And those are some of the key topics we shall be handling in our short courses that gives you exactly how do you do it, what do they and those so that you can be able to take into action. Part of the things, in, especially in real estate, I've said that it's long-term wealth is to convert your money into assets that increase in value. Most people, they invest on the things that depreciate. But good investors, they, appreciate, they do investment in things that gain value like land, land or houses, where you build and sell. But I need to put a caution. And it is good to do your homework well before investing in real estate. There are so many people who have lost their fortunes, basically because they do not do their due diligence. And therefore, it is important to have a reputable lawyers to do the due diligence. Those are the people who validate whether that title is correct. It is also good if you are not sure the ground. You, have, you buy maps from the survey of Kenya, where you can actually use a surveyor who can actually show you the ground from the map. There is also good to also to deal with reputable registered real estate companies. That's why you find there is so many people who have sunk so much investment because there has been no guidance. And therefore, this is part of the things to help you realize and safeguard yourself. Financial advisors is suitable for any investment. It is always good to ask people who have the technical knowledge about it. Don't just be stories for somebody who, are not invest, who is not an investor. 
Some of those stories is what will give you part of that. Part of the pictures you have seen, these are part of our properties that you have put in one of the programs on an online platform so the, that has been validated with the right titles, with the people who have already want to sell and even those who want to buy. So power is the kind of the fundamentals for investing. And I think this is critical for you. Let your money work for you. If you work for a salary throughout, it is very difficult for you. The time will stop working, even the income stops working. Therefore, if you have put money in these kind of investments, they'll give you return. Get a professional team to help you. For example, if you want to buy shares, please open an account with a stockbroker who understands the trade, but also read about it so that you can understand how it works. But also do it regularly. Don't just do it once in a month or, or do it just occasionally. Do it regularly so that you can build the wealth. Harness the power of compound interest the way we have seen in the money market. Think long term. Don't just do it keep for, for months. Think about if you are now 40, think about this uh, 20 years to come by the time I'm doing 60. This is what I should have actually done. Move from aggressive to conservative in age. There are areas now you find that when you are getting to the retirement, you need to liquidate some of those hard assets so that you can put it in a near money, so that if you need money, you can access it. Invest in what makes you comfortable. Don't invest on stuff that you actually not too sure. Otherwise, you'll be able to be risking your money. And therefore, to call for action on this, it is basically to say for any assistance, making investment decision in any of these categories, including government treasury bonds, we have provided a dedicated email, investment at giftedholdings.co.ke. When you send any form of assistance or any kind of plan that you have for investment, we'll be able to help you. And that is, that's why we have provided for savings is separate, for investment will be separate, but even for those who, will, who are particularly interested in real estate, either you are looking for a house to buy or you are looking for us, you have a property that you need to sell. We found out that one of the platform that was not readily available is actually somebody to sell what they have and even to where to look for. And we have made it easy with HTTPS or just if you type of an easy real estate as one word, .co.ke. There, there is an online platform that you can actually be able to look for all different properties, either plots or homes or land or farmland, whatever it is. And all those have been validated and they have the right titles and they have genuine owners. You can be able to reduce your chances of being conned because you'll be at the right places. That is call for action. Now, I am going pretty fast and I would like to just to touch now on risk management. And part of that risk management basically, I will be able to go through just a few things, but I'll invite my colleague Veronica, who is also on call, and you'll be able to take us a few when you get there. But basically risk management is, is basically talking about personal financial risks. You have heard in today's world, one cannot ignore the occurrence and the subsequent impact of financial risk in our lives. Personal risks can be can dent in one's financial stability and affect overall quality of life. And this happens. People lose jobs. They lose income. Accident happens. You are the breadwinner. You are incapacitated and you cannot work. But also I have put in there, there are four ways of how you can manage your risk. You can decide to assume it. You take it head on. You say, I'll, I'll handle it. But you can also avoid risk by making sure that you do what is right. But you can also decide to share risk that you're not just exposed. You can be able to share by even insuring, partly insuring some things. Or you can even opt to transfer risk to someone else, which I think is the preferred version. That's why it is green that if there is anything you cannot do about, it is good to transfer that risk. And that's what you'll be talking about. That's what insurance companies are for. They are there to take up your transfer risks to them. 
and you'll be able to hear more slightly about that. There are different types of risks that will come. One, there is income risk. You find that, like COVID is a typical example where most businesses actually collapsed and most people actually lost their income and they didn't know what to do. There are head risks where you find yourself completely, uh, you are ill, there are terminal ills that illness and it's so common like cancers and others are very common and therefore you need also to mitigate. That's why the medical insurance actually is critical. That's why it's also good important to have the uh, what you call the HIF, uh, uh, what you call the HIF card. Mortality risk. These are the ones for accidents mainly that impact on you and family. Then there is investment risk. And I want just to touch just on a few. Part of those risks that we need to mitigate, it is important for us to know that we need to take proactive approach. We no longer need one to take out of ignorance. Let's be sure that the risks are here and we need to mitigate them. And in our short course, we shall be able to have a very deep analysis of these risks and what is in the market that addresses those risks and how much will it cost you so that you can be able to be a beneficiary and be able not to be caught. This is risk treatment. It has the three, four things where you can share or transfer retention or you can accept as it is you say you'll be able to do it you can avoid or limit it altogether or you can do reduction or mitigation and that's why we'll be able to say what we'll be doing in this and this is what i'll be asking you to do is to mitigate those particular risks by make sure that you are taking up relevant insurance covers for yourself we have partnered with a few people on risk management. And one of them, we have a GTI insurance agency. This is what actually will be able to deal with all the insurance matters. We have a team that is doing it, but it has partnered with Jubilee Health Insurance. For those who are looking for all diverse manner of health insurance, they can be able to get all the details. What does it cover? What is it? How much does it cost? we can be able to help you. There is also Prudential, and we have one of the partners from Prudential who will be also taking us through in the next slide. And if this is basically one of the oldest insurance companies that have one of the best products, which will be able to share briefly with a bit of an example. Then you have Jubilee Life Insurance also has similar, proper, similar uh, services, and you can easily be able to be helped if you need more. Then we have APSA. APSA is not only a bank, but it also has an APSA life. It is a full fledged insurance company. It also has anything that you are thinking of pension. For those who are not in good pensionable employment, this is a good place you can take an endowment uh, pension plan with APSA that is, has a protection. And of course, during our short course, there will be somebody from APSA who will actually articulate this. And this is part of our plan. And Madison Group has both medical and also the same. I want to pause. I want to pause there and ask my colleague Veronica if you can hear me. You can unmute and be able just to just to take us through just in a ten minutes on this presentation. Veronica, can you hear Thank me? Thank you, Simon. Yes, I can hear you. Okay, go ahead. Uh, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Veronica. I work with a company called Prudential. As uh, Simon has indicated. Um, sorry, my camera seems to be stuck, but I'll take you through the, our presentation. Who is Prudential? We are a global insurance company in this space. Prudential started in 1848 in the UK and has a face in every continent. We are currently attached to the Asia market because we are young. And in Africa, you can see the whole of Asia is Prudential. Prudential is the number one insurance company in Asia. In Africa, we are now in eight countries. You can see the red in Africa, that is where we are. Kenya, Uganda, 
Malawi, Zambia, Cameroon, Ghana, Nigeria, Togo, Sierra Leone. And we offer different uh, products in this space. You are not, you are losing you. I think I can take it up from there if she is not able to. From the screen, you can be able to see one of the flagship product is Pro Life. That is whole of life. And they have given a good example there that five year old Kenyan parent, if you take up about 10 million cover, you only pay 7,600 for 10 years, which is only 913. But if something happens to you, it, you pay 10, 10 million shillings. Are you back, Veronica? Yes, Simon, I am. Thank okay. you for taking it up. I think it's my net. So as Simon says, this is, this is an example of a 35-year-old taking a cover of 10 million, a life cover of 10 million. And this client pays 7,616 for 10 years. Beauty with a prudential product actually is that you can choose the term that you'd want to pay, but you remain on cover for the rest of your life. So this is an example of someone who has taken a 10 year term for 10 million. You can see this person pays the total amount that he'll have paid is 913, 920,000 shillings for those 10 years, but they're covered for 10 million. This means that should life happen, a life happening can be um, death because they're covered for death. It's a life that we cover. This 10 million goes to the loved ones and you choose who you want to approach on this too. It can be your children, it can be your spouse, it can be people that you think depend on you. Who, if you're not there, then uh, they'll suffer. For an additional of 2,450, you are covered for a critical illness. And we see a lot of critical illnesses lately. I think cancer is prevalent, strokes, heart attacks, paralysis, organ failure, those are some of the things that we cover. So if this 35 year old takes an additional benefit of a critical illness for 5 million, he pays an additional 2,450 for those 10 years. Once the 10 years are over, you remain on cover without pay and Prudential will pay this 10,000 shillings if this person passes on. If a critical happens, critical illness happens, we will pay you 5 million to take care of that. Because once a critical illness kicks in, it means this person has to manage themselves by taking drugs. And drugs in this country are very expensive. We can attest to that. And especially with what is happening now, you can see doctors on strike. So for someone who is ill and they're not able to afford a private hospital, then it means they have a problem. And you can see that even in the current situation. Now for this product, if you take an additional, if you pay an addition 2,400, you are covered for 10 million for an accidental disability. Meaning if uh, any of our clients gets, uh, is involved in an accident and they're disabled, we pay 10 million to take care of that occurrence. And this, of course, because it also means once you get an accident, you need medical attention. And it can be very expensive depending on the damage that has been done to you. One good thing about our products also, they have bonuses every year that are declared every year. And it's added to the cover that you picked that is paid to your loved ones when our client passes on. And it could be within this period of 10 years or beyond the 10 years when it happens. What is this product for? What is it ideal for? And why this product? It can be used for estate planning. It's actually a leg it can be used as a legacy plan for those who have people depending on them and you'd want to keep them on a certain lifestyle. Then this is an ideal product for that. And the good thing about this product is that uh, there's no tassels after one person's own. Like they don't have to waste, wait for the trustee 
to be able to get this money. This money is paid as soon as this person passes on. And we know that uh, when one passes on, it takes time. There are processes to be taken before whatever you had is transferred to your loved one. So this is a product that can take care of, it can take up to, I think up to three years or more, depending on the case and uh, who is involved. So this actually takes care of your family immediately after you pass on as they wait for these other proceeds to kick in. It can be used as also for family safety net. Meaning if you are the breadwinner, God forbid that you pass on and you have this product, the process will come to your family and they'll be able to maintain the kind of lifestyle that you had put them on. As opposed to if you didn't have this product, then you have to look for other ways to survive after you pass on. So it actually gives them that protection they need when the breadwinner is not there. It also maintains the lifestyle, lifestyle that you had already put them on. For, uh, it can be used as, it's also a product that can be used for someone with a spouse. You can actually pick this product as a joint cover, meaning the responsibility is shared. So if one of them is not there, then this turns in in the place of the breadwinner who's not been there to keep the family also in the same lifestyle that you had put them on. It covers critical illness, as I had explained, so that in the, what we have on medical covers, and for those who have de probably medical covers, you know, medical cover on a critical illness will just give you a small portion to take care of that um, eventuality, that's, that situation at that particular time. This product actually gives you more on a critical illness to be able to mitigate that um, incident when it happens. It can also, for those who are corporate managers, is a product also that you can pick so that when you're not working, because at one time we'll stop working and you'll be on your own. And when you stop working, even if you have these covers at your place of work, it means you leave them there when you retire or when you, leave, you lose your job. So this product would be good to cover for that eventuality should it happen, then you remain on cover even outside your working environment. So it can also be used as a savings while you enjoy the protection that it comes with. So savings for your loved ones, but it also protects you from an eventuality of a critical illness or a disability. Simon, you can move to the next uh, cover. Yes, the next, uh, um, Simon. Savings and protection, that's why I am. Simon. Yes. You can hear me. Yeah? Now, the next one is the part year old with one year old child. Go ahead. Yes, so for the next product cover is actually a savings plan. The one that I talked about is a pure life cover. This next product actually is uh, money that comes back from you. It can be used as an education policy for people with kids. And Simon has just talked about uh, a family that uh, ends up in problems if the breadwinner is not there. This would be a very good product because it protects the child and it protects the client who's saving, the father or the parent, whoever is saving, because it has both savings and a protection bit of it. So this is an example of a 35-year-old who has one child, who has a one-year-old child, who would like to save two for education up to university. This is 18 years is based on the age of the child. So for a child who's one year, our normal system is actually they graduate at age 21 if they start at the right time. So this is an 18 year time where we are, we are um, plan that will give them money when they get to university. The target for this is uh, 3 million. We call it uh, a summer short. This person pays a premium of 10,000 shillings, 858 per month to achieve this goal for that 18 year, 18, 18 year term that he has picked. Beauty with this product is that the premium that you pay right from the beginning does not change. It remains the same until the end. So you pay the 10,000, he pays the 10,858 until the end for a 3 million 
some assured cover. In the event of the death, it because it has other benefits, we will pay the family 4.2M. If it's an accidental death, we pay 5.5M. In the event of a critical illness, we will pay 3.6 million to the loved ones. And this uh, cover will continue for the rest of the time, for the rest of the 18 years, without, in case of, sorry. Hello? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, Same. yes, proceed. You can hear me, yeah? Yes. So saying in case of a yes. death, it pays on a natural death, whereby someone has been sick, we pay the sum assured of three million. But the cover will continue until the 18 years, even without the person who was paying because they're not there. And we will still pay the maturity values to the next of kin because we also ask for the next of kin when this person is picking this product. In the event of a critical illness, we pay 3.6. We pay 3.6 million for this person to get medical attention. And we realize when a critical illness, a illness kicks in, it can be very expensive for the person because. You need to manage yourself by medication until the time when one passes on. So this actually helps at that particular time. At the time when it happens, the client stops paying, but the cover will continue until the end and we'll still pay the proceeds that we had promised them when they were coming on board. So this cover actually guarantees the payment at the end of the day. Um, call for action. I can see my, my time is almost up. Maybe before I go to the call of action, I could say a few things about Prudential. Why Prudential? One, we are global. Two, we also take values and integrity at Prudential very seriously. We are major on that. We have systems and procedures in place and the digital inno innovations that uh, compare us to none. Our claim payment is very prompt. We pay on time. We have actually the best claim record in this country. And we also allow our clients to access. They can actually see the process or proceed, pro, procedure of the progress of their savings digitally. So they are able to access. They are able to access their savings to see the progress online. So we can go to protocol for action. Simon. So for any query or clarification on insurance, please get in touch. That is my number and Simon's. For those who are interested, if you have any question, we'll talk about some of those that we can now. But you can also get in touch so that uh, we have now one-on-one -on -one based on your need. Simon, I think I'm done. Simon? Unmute. Unmute, Simon. It seems the telephone app for Simon is having a number of digits. Simon? Hello? Any question? I think Simon has an issue. Yeah, I'm just asking when I look at the number, the telephone number for Simon. Yes. It does an extra digit. I don't know that that's the number. I think there's, um, I can I give you the right number? Yes. It has that the extra one is not there, so it should be seven two zero nine one nine six three one. The last digit is not there. Thanks a lot. That's what I saw. That extra. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you.
All right, so we can have uh, Dr. Thomas, please go ahead and uh, continue the retirement planning. Is Thomas online? Any question while we you just we wait for Simon or Dr. Momani you can go on. Thank you, Veronica. You're welcome. Um, you have focused a lot on investment of 35 year olds and uh, that kind of range. Yes. What about people who are maybe in the last cycle of, of work and they are looking towards retirement, apart from the pension schemes that exist in our places, etc.? Mm. People yeah. who are self employed or people who are working in NGOs on contract and they never know whether they'll be recontracted or not. Thank you. They can actually pick either the savings plan as a personal savings, so they can take a pure pension plan. And Prudential has one of the best pension plans in this country. We actually gave, this year we gave 11.35 net return on the last years. And we have an average of 11.35 for the last four years. So this person can so either that, take an individual pension plan, mm -hmm. or they can pick a the savings plan with protection and they convert it at the end into a pension, a pure pension plan. When they get okay. The so when you're saying you have this 11%, what mm. kind of money are you looking for to start with? For example, if I'm 40 years old and I'm in a contract job, eh? it yes. has no, it has no benefit for me in any of those areas. When I travel, they pay, or yes. they just pay me my salary, but there's no bonus, there's no gratuity, there's nothing. Hmm. You can actually pick a personal uh, pension product. Whatever yeah. you put in, a minimum is actually 500. Whatever you put okay. in will be, depend on your capability at okay. that particular time. So you can decide to okay. pick your own. Yeah. Pay on a monthly basis. If you have a lump sum, yeah. you can also put into that fund. And mm -hmm. it will give you the same return. Okay, thank you. So we bring those people on board as well. Can we be able to do this? Thank you. Thank you. I think that's part of the question. You can be able to clarify on an email so that we can be able to maximize some time. Yes. Thank you, Simon. And your volume Sorry. is a bit... Uh, um, need to come closer to the device. Oh, I increased the volume. I'm saying get closer to the device so that uh, it doesn't, uh, it sounds a bit muffled, but we can hear you. And please, okay. please move ahead. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. This is Dr. Thomas Momanyi, the founder of the Retirement Academy Kenya. This is probably the first retirement academy, which is officially... Hello? Okay, thank you. Uh, this is the first retirement academy, which is officially registered. Why a retirement academy? Most of the people, as they go through their job, as they go through their life, they never imagine that one time, there will come a time you'll be told not to go to the office. And this is actually the next pandemic that we're expecting in the third world, and more especially in Kenya. The people who are born before computers, they, call, they are called BBC, are actually being phased out because the world is going digital. Now, when you are told to go home because of age, what do you tell your family? What do you tell your children? What do you tell your neighbors? That's actually mind-boggling. The Retirement Academy, we plan 
and plan for you what you can do after timing. I've actually written my notes with the background that most of the Kenyans or the people in the world don't even write a retirement plan. Why do we fear writing a retirement plan? It's because retirement has always been looked at as some kind of finality, some kind of void, some kind of darkness, because you don't even know where you're going. But at the Retirement Academy, we've been able to come up with a program whereby you come up with what exactly you want to become. We give you a jump start. We give you a life span again, that even after 6 and 70, you can actually start something and do something very formidable. 10 years ago, we jump started. Some people are really at a fight of um, uh, collapsing. We tell them, no, you cannot actually stop life. You can start something formidable. You can become somebody. You can even now rejuvenate yourself. So most of the people, instead of fearing, uh, going home and retiring, you can start something different. We have many people who are being retired today. We have many people who don't have savings. We have many people who have property and don't even know exactly what to do. But because of fear of confessing for sure, I've just, uh, I mean, I've just retired and I need something to do, you find that people get wasted. People spend their money in areas without involving expertise. They fear even asking somebody else because uh, retirement has been taken like, oh, we're sorry you're old. That's the unfortunate part of it, that we've lost many people uh, actually because of our retirement. They develop ailments, lifestyle diseases, they become scared until such a time that they're not even able to function. But now at the retirement academy, we're saying, no, we can't continue that way. We are coming up with a program whereby we shall be uh, in public, and telling the people that you can actually add more years, you can add value, you can become more useful even after retirement. What do you do when you retire? Come up with a retirement plan. What exactly do you want to do? What exactly do you know? Which is your industry? Whichever industry that you are in, if you're in finance, if you're in insurance, and you've been retired, maybe the lady was just spoken, when finally they fire her from the, her place of work, what does she want to do? She becomes an insurance agent or she opens her own insurance company. It means the same company that you're working for, the same industry that has trained you, the same uh, trade that you know is actually where you grow and even become an agent. Our country today requires a lot of uh, uh, items. Our country today doesn't even, I can give you an example, that we import almost 100% of paint. Imagine a country like Kenya importing all the paint. If you came up and say, oh, I can manufacture some paint, well, and could we have all the market? We have actually so many areas that have not been touched. We have so many areas that when you go to the market, you find that most of the things are imported from other countries. Well, I cannot talk here in public. There's a shame when you find that even we cannot even manufacture the simplest things that we're using in our country. Now, a country like ours, which has got all the opportunities, then we have so many people retiring. This is where we need to come up and say, hey, let us wake up. Let us now put our foot down. Let us do a lot of research. Let us now retire gracefully. Like now when I've started my retirement academy, I'm so busy. People are calling me, inquiring what you want us to do. How can we write our retirement plan? How can we write a will for our family? What do we tell our families? Like keep our life now before when you're old and you have a family. What do you tell your, your, your children? How do you even write a program for them to continue? You find that we have uh, a lot of property which is not documented. You don't even know what is where. Now, at the retirement academy, we tell you, can we write your program? Can we tell your people what you own? Can we tell your people where you're going? Can you come together as a family and say what is our trade? It's unfortunate that most of the time you find one person is an accountant, a finance manager like Simon, Another person in the family is a medical doctor. Another person in the family is a mechanic. These people, when they come together, they don't have a common goal. But when they finally retire, they will meet at one point. What do they know is the family? What is actually your family? That's the definition. 
what is your family? How can we define you? What do you know? Like now we say, we are a family of doctors. We are a family of financiers. We are a, fam a family of traders. We are like a transporters. We want to create you and make you more useful after retirement. I love all people because they come and say, I don't know what I'm, I'm doing. I don't know where I'm going. Now, if you don't know where you're going, we start with you at that point. Because in the retirement academy, that's the only place where you come and sit down. Then we ask you, how old are you? With a smile, because people, people fear uh, talking about their age. When somebody is asking you about your age, you say, oh, I'm 60 years. Probably. Oh, what do you want to do? I'm planning actually to start a very big farm. And I mean, here I am. How much money do you have? Then we shall work with you the bank and tell the bank, no, this guy is not as old as you think. Age is not a factor. Give him the money and you'll be able to produce food. You'll be able to do what you're planning to do. So the Retirement Academy, which is actually now uh, one of the emerging industries, we realize that most of the people are being retired because of um, the, our economy is not good. There's a lot of redundancy. And most of the companies, especially the international companies, are moving out. We are not going to throw the towel and say, we are unfortunate, we can't continue. What we are going to do is to say, can we now innovate? Can we become the next Korea today? Can we do what the Chinese are doing? Can we do what is being done in Dubai? We've been to so many countries and we see the small things that we buy here in our country are actually being made by small kids. So when I come to this platform is to say, there's a lot that we can do as a country. There are lots of opportunities that are lying and waiting for us. There's actually everything possible that can be done in our country, Kenya. So when you come to our retirement academy, we shall actually work with you the journey and the roadmap of um, retirement. What, where do you start from? And where do you find an end? Most of our students will start from age 50. 60 actually is prime age. We tell you you are very young at 65. Then from there we know we can create you, we can do documentation, we can actually tell you the industries in which you can invest. We have a whole list of the industries which you can invest in. We have uh, the risk analysis. We can tell you which areas not to touch and which areas we can actually be able to walk through. So this being uh, like when you grow old, how do you hand over to the next generation? Do you even have a document which shows what you own and what you don't own? Most of us just pass on and the uh, next thing which happens is that the children don't even know what their father had or their mother. But if we tell you how to document, how to write down what you own, it will be very easy for you to pass over a legacy to the next generation. That is a very, very uh, important area that has been neglected. But in the retirement academy, we are so glad that we actually take you through and show you how to write the symbol uh, retirement uh, plan and what you are handing over to the next generation. It's not something that you want to go without leaving a legacy. And think, what do you want to leave behind? What do, have you been having? What have you been doing? What are the tools of trade? What do you tell your children? What's the planning that you want to do? We ask you those pertinent questions that if you don't, you don't leave this one without actually leaving a legacy. What do you call it? We have most of um, the buildings, the cars, and the roads named after people. When you leave this, uh, this world, what will be named after you? What will your children be talking about their father or their mother? So those are the areas that we take you through and tell you you must plan to leave a legacy behind. You must actually plan to give your children or your other generation that is coming behind you something for them to rely on, something to hold their hands on. Otherwise, if you just uh, quit, leave this world without leaving a legacy behind, you find that your actual you generation gets lost. Finally, we want to welcome you to the Retirement Academy. We are available all the time. We can do your planning. We can do your I mean, planning and retirement. We can show you how to retire step by step. And we need to do for you a very nice document, which is called My Retirement Plan. Every person must actually endeavor to have a retirement plan, which is documented. And uh, for you to get us, we have our number there, Dr. TM or Dr. Thomas Mumani. My number is 0720 or 0790 
0708-7778, or you can also call Simon if you want to get hold of me. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Thank you, Dr. Momani, for that. And there is an email called Retirement at Gifted Holdings. These are the people now you, you can easily write and get more details at personalized level. That is the beauty of having professionals taking the lead and you are able to know exactly where to get the help you are looking for. So if you are looking for a retirement plan or you need a personalized retirement coaching or mentoring, please contact us on that email. Now, as we wind up, because now I have only one minute so that I can hand over to Dr. Kitawi, we uh, just to mention the enrollment for short course. This is coming up. We are happy to say that this conversation doesn't end here or even the weekend that is coming for Family Stewardship Weekend, which all of us, we need to be part and parcel. We have already put up together kind of a 10-week short course and it is listed there, financial planning, savings, fundamentals, and also how and how to do it, investments, the type, the how, and what opportunities, and where to invest depending on your age, risk management, what do you need in terms of types of risk, how do you mitigate them, and what products are there in the market. And of course, the retirement, now you get a full dose. Even the opportunities for investment after you are done with the employer have dumped you. Then finally, we have the final one of emerging trends and cross-cutting issues that will be able to place everybody in the right place. And then we'll be able to say, ILU will provide more details of the commencement dates once everything is done. But I know for sure there is something that is already in the works. There will be a poster to be done. We have emails for all those who have actually recorded sign up. And it is our desire Lord, as facilitators of this course that if there will be those when it comes an enrollment first batch, the 50 people will enroll first and pay, they'll get 50% cash discount. And I think that one will be able to be. And also we shall give you one month free personalized coaching and mentoring for any area of action that you have done. And we have put in the details of how you can get me at 0720-919631 or you can write to me, Simon at Gifted Holdings. CEO. And that one gives to an end. And very thank you. And back to you, Dr. Kitawi. You can take it up. Take it away from there and really take questions. Thank you very thank much you. for listening to us. Thank you so much, Simon. Um, I was a bit worried uh, about time, but we are doing very well in our time. And um, for this time, we are giving it to questions and they are already questions that are coming and so as a way of moderating the the, the questions uh, i would like as much as possible to have the quest some questions on the chat i've seen that it's working very well that uh, uh several people are utilizing the chat to ask their questions and i've seen that uh several of your companions are taking up and answering those questions. I think that is a very good way of going about it. And so what I will do, because I know there are several questions that are coming up, is uh, I will give a straight five questions, uh, which you will note down, and then we'll see if we'll take another batch of another five questions. And so I'm opening it up to um, you, you use the de device uh, to raise your hand and then you, you can ask the question. So anyone who would want to go first? My name is Professor Miriam Gishungwa. Please I go wanted ahead. to I wanted to ask a question on uh, portfolio investment because of um, um, just the management of it, portfolio investment management, the part of the cost of capital, just that analysis only, so that maybe one can be able to make a decision on which one uh, would be more viable than the other. Just that. Thank you. 
All right. Thank you very much. Uh, Simon, I hope you have taken up um, that question. Let's have another question. We are taking five questions. Um, Simon Shege, I see your hand is up. Yes, thank you very much, uh, moderator. I had uh, put my question on the chat, so I wanted to know the timing of that uh, short course, uh, the 10-week short course. Is it uh, virtual? Is it full-time? Is it uh, scheduled for the weekends, evening? So just some clarity on the scheduling of that course. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Simon Kiruthi, um, hope you've also taken that question. I know we have not completely finalized on, on, on that, but uh, I know you are able to answer that question. Thank you. That's fine. Okay. Uh, um, since there is a lull, I will give you, uh, Mr. Simon, please go ahead and answer the these first two questions. And I will pick the others which are on the chat which have not been answered. So over to you, Mr. Uh, Simon. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Kitawi. Uh, Professor Miriam, you said you need portfolio investment options so that you can make a decision. Uh, what we presented was basically an example of uh, Jubilee Asset Management on only two items, on a fixed income of 100000 and how much you'll be able to get and you can be able to roll out, and it is at 15%. Uh, that is, uh, but is normally subject to the holding tax, so the effective comes about 13 there are also others also, like uh, what you call a standard investment bank. Their rate is now actually, effective rate is 18%. Without, and it does, it's not subject to the whole tax because they are global in nature. So when you are looking at in terms of returns, we could be able to give you different options. And that's why we gave the email. If you need a particular product and more information, I'm able now to bring it to you. But this was just an example of what is available from uh, Jubilee Insurance. But there are many others, and we can easily be able to give you options and computations for your decision making. Um, Mr. Chege, I've asked about this short course. We are still on the planning stage with the Dr. Tawi, but our, our timelines will be most likely from June, that is when it's likely to take up, take up shape. It will be virtual. It will be conducted virtually. We'll be able to agree whether it will be a weekday in the evenings, most likely between either six to eight is a, is a two hour. Is a, it will be a two hour lesson held once a week. So that the rest of the week there will be practical actions to be done. So that's why it is not a normal classroom. It is actually a practical oriented. And it will have like for savings, the way it should be scheduled is like you have one area talking about the principles and what behind savings and all the factors. Then the second session of it is to explain instruments that are available in the market and you'll be able to get the whole uh, the whole different spectrum, and you understand and explain exactly what it is. That is how it is structured. Back to you, Dr. Ktawi. Yeah. Um, are, are you able to give an indication of the cost? I know we had talked about it a little. We have, I think uh, most likely it will range to be about 30,000 shillings thereabout. Either less or above, but that should be actually that should be about about that. Okay. Per person. 
So, so be before we go to another round of questions, I want to bring to your attention about the Family Stewardship Weekend that we will be having next week at the ILU Kilimani campus. And uh, the time will be from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And um, the cost is uh, 3000 500 per family and uh, individual individual and accompanied adults will pay 2000 Kenya shillings and lunch and refreshments will be provided and um, I'll be typing the link to the re re registration on 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 the on the chat so please um, uh, um, log in onto the link so that we can have your details and we can reach out to you. And um uh and and this is especially I've seen that the the, the numbers have gone down, but we are still taking more questions. Um and and uh, when we meet on Saturday at the Kiliman ILU's International Leadership uh, Universities, Kilimani campus, we will have a whole day where we'll be able to discuss more about uh stewardship and so um let me i'd say that we'll go to the chat and and see if uh there are some questions that have not uh, maybe maybe uh, dr kitawi just before you yes. go on may I, may I kind of just request a short opportunity please go ahead uh, yeah this is uh tim kirohi uh from by international leadership university uh, I'd just like to implore that uh, why you should consider coming on Saturday is in addition to the very valuable material you've received tonight, we'll also talk about how now to structure all of this with an eternal perspective. Because, um, you know, all we that we do here is for this world, we know that ultimately we are here for a short time. I think the death of our commander, you know, not commander chief, but the, the CDF, uh, uh, chief of defense forces, uh, for General Francis, Francis Ogola, is a reminder, you know, he was a senior officer, you know, had, I'm sure at his disposal many things, but of course that time comes for all of us. So how do you invest so that not only would you get dividends in this life, we all believe about, uh, believe about an afterlife, that uh, there is what you can do now so that it also gives you a lot of eternal return because we believe we are only here for a short time, but uh, we will live on, like he told us, beyond this life. So as you think about the Family Stewardship Weekend, we'll be thinking about also, in addition to the things you've heard tonight, you'll also be talking about how you can invest your time, uh, not just money, but your time, your influence, and also your expertise uh, for something that will outlive you. And uh, thank you very much. I just wanted to do that. Allow me before I sign off just to also, there are many, many guests here tonight and uh, we are grateful for each one of you. But allow me, um, I would be failing if I didn't recognize colleague Vice-Chancellor, Professor Peter Moriungi from Taraka University and DVC, Professor Christina Nyango from Taita Taveta University and also Professor uh, Walter Jaoko from the University of Nairobi as well. Thank you very much. And all the other guests, I don't know you are appreciated, but because of time, allow me to turn back the time to uh, Dr. Kitavi. So we look forward to seeing you on Saturday as well. Thank you. So uh, thank, thank you very much, uh, uh, Professor Tim. Um, and we'll continue with um, the questions uh, until our time um, ends. I will stop at uh, 9 p.m. And there is a question here, um, which I would like uh, Mr. Simon to pick it up. And you can give any of uh, the people who are with you who can answer it. Can someone run us through a practical guide on a pension scheme in a nutshell, how it works? And this is from Lawi Murunga. There is a particular, when it comes to pension, which is completely very different from uh, the saving schemes, because most of the pension we have people who are really specialized 
in a pension management. And that's why most of them, they actually invest this money in all those same money markets and those other opportunities. So for the particular pension, and I think my colleague, uh, uh, Veronica, who had mentioned that they have a very good pension uh, already a product that is already done, but there was a particular person who was supposed to join actually to speak a little bit on pension. I would rather to give a comprehensive thing. I would like you just write, drop us an email in any of those either investment at gifted holdings or saving that then we can be able to ask those questions and we'll be able to give you a very comprehensive response on the pension and what is currently in pension. What can you do with it if you are given and other opportunities that are around and flexibility that is around that is within the law. That one we can be able to get back to you in a comprehensive through the communications or the emails that you are provided. If that is in order, Mr. Moriungi. Yeah, that's Mr. Lawi. Is, is yes, Mr. Lawi, is, is your right. question answered? He has said on chat that it's fine. Okay. Kindly All proceed. Right. Thank you very much. And we want to, to recognize Dr. Benson Murgor from the Commission of University Education. Thank you for uh, gracing this occasion. And also Dr. Evelyn Majimbo, who is the Vice Chair of uh, International Leadership University Council. Thank you very much. We still have a little time before we, 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 we wind down for, for questions. Um, um, Sir Simon, this is coming from Mr. Ingutia Avery. May you recap the things you listed that one should consider before investing? That is expertise, etc. I missed that one. Has Simon dropped off? Simon, are you still there? Uh, I'm muted, that's my knowledge. <laughs> oh, but you, you've had the question, it's, it's on the chat. Yes, the recap. The recap of some of the things to consider before investing. This was basically in real estate specifically. In real estate, you need to consider one, uh, you need first to know exactly, uh, you have to involve a lawyer for due diligence. You must know whether that property is correct or the title document is fake or right one. That's why you use the lawyers. So due diligence is key for any kind of, any investment that you need to do. The other aspect is that you need to have what you call, if you need to confirm, you are not too sure whether the land where it is is good to use uh, a surveyor, certified surveyor, or if you are not too sure where the property you bought and you are not sure where it is, go to Survey of Kenya and buy that map around and you know as long as you have the number, then you go to the surveyor, they'll show you exactly what you need to do. You also need to have an expert advice. Don't use any fake or quack people who are not well registered, like if it's a real estate person, Make sure that person is registered and you can be able to book and get the details. The other, the other things that you need to do is that also you need a financial advisor who can actually tell you that instead of investing this money in this, there are these other better options 
that can be able to help you make better return. So that's why when you have money that you have already set aside for investment, it's good to engage a financial advisor who can actually give you different opportunities and different instruments. Then you can weigh them. So in terms of the quick guidelines on this, it is important to do that. The other quick guideline is that don't invest on something that you don't know. Where you don't have an information about Simon, you're uh, muted. Mr. Simon, you're muted. I'm not too sure who is muting me because it, it was okay. <laughs> right. So it is important. Those are the critical highlights of the recap of what you need to consider before you invest. You have got it, Mr. Ingatia? Yes, he has uh, written. Thank you very much. Well understood. Excellent. Thanks. And as, as we mentioned um, earlier, uh, this is coming from uh, Walter Jaoko. Um, Will we share the slides or post them on the website for reference? Yes, if you 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 put in your details, uh, um, if we we have your details, then we'll be able to send it to you. And so we 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 can only send it when we have your details through the link, uh, the Google form that we had provided earlier. All right, I see that um, the, the questions have uh, slowed down. Um, I'll take this opportunity to share about the short courses uh, of uh, International Leadership University. Uh, this is through what we call the Transforming Leadership Center. And, 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 and through this course, uh, through this channel, we offer not only from our three schools, uh, and the VC, uh, Dr. Uh, Professor Tim Kirui shared uh, very elaborately when we began. Uh, we have the School of Theology and uh, Christian Ministry. We have the School of Leadership and Governance. And we also have the School of Education and Social Sciences. And these offer academic courses. And on top of that, we have the Transforming Leadership Center and with it, we offer professional courses, which um, have become very popular, especially oh, we've had some considerable traction, especially within the online courses that we offer. And we have project management, we have results driven leadership, we, uh, we have strategic uh, management, we have technical report writing, and all this information, you can find it in our website um, and feel free to, 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 to write to us or to inquire. And I'll also put my number, which you can share, which you can uh, use to, to, to write and inquire about a short course that we can offer. And um, these uh, have really been practical um, because individuals are using them to grow in their professional areas um, several of them uh, uh, have come, uh, have told me that they were able to use them to apply for jobs, especially within when they are working. And we, we offer them at a very, very competitive price. Uh, most of our courses for five sessions in, in, um, in five weeks, uh, in, uh, two hours per week, we are offering them at 10,000 Kenya shillings which is a very affordable price, especially for those who are working. As I said, uh, we still have some time for questions. Let me check on the chat if we have 
If not, I will hand over to um, Dr. Beatrice Hamati so that she can uh, make a few remarks and also close for us. Uh, Dr. Mary Gishungwa, uh, we've noted your email address. We'll send the information. And we have also posted on the chat the link to the Family Stewardship Weekend. So over to you, Dr. Beatrice Kamatin Jenga. It seems like uh, her connection may have had an interruption. Of course, in this weather, it's likely that that can happen. All right. So um, I'll hand it over to you, uh, Professor Kirui. Okay, very well. I'll stand in for her very briefly. Just to thank each one of you for coming. I hope you found the various thoughts on financial planning, investment, and retirement planning uh, stimulating. You hear here a bit more about that, uh, you know, especially for those who may have missed, if you have friends who missed on Saturday. But as I said, we'll have a lot more. Uh, we'll, we'll frame it in the context of not only stewarding our material resources, which is what we've talked about tonight, but also your time, your influence, and also your expertise, which are all assets that we have that we should put to good use. Allow me to especially appreciate people who joined us. I can see uh, Jafet Koros, who I know joined us from the Scandinavia countries, um, together with others. Uh, they actually suspended another group to be able to join tonight, and many others, maybe from around the country, here in Kenya and other countries. Uh, you are very much appreciated. We hope that this was uh, helpful. If you'd like to hear a bit more or maybe get a recap uh, on the email that you got that uh, sent you the link, uh, you can write back and be able to get the, the recording for this session. ILU exists to uh, equip each one of us to make our contribution, to make our part, uh, take our part in the holistic transformation of our nation. And uh, we believe that uh, we can all do that. Let's live uh, in such a way that not only in our lifetime, uh, again, allow me to reference uh, the General Gola, the late General Gola, who happened to have known personally, that also in his death, uh, I think he is having a lot more influence. I'm seeing his clips being shared on various groups because he lived well. He lived with integrity and all the virtues that come with that. Let's do that so that our lives will count. Thank you very much. Allow me to make a, do a special appreciation to Simon, uh, CP Simon Kimani. And his team, uh, thank you very much to each one of you who did the various sessions, Madam Veronica and also uh, Dr. Thomas uh, uh Thank you very much for your contributions. We look forward to uh, future partnerships as well. So without further ado, allow me to pray. We like to finish on time. We start on time and we like to finish on time so that you can trust us with your time next time. So allow me to open this one up. Um, Maybe for our neighbor from Kitengela. If you're able to in a place to pray, uh, Lazarus Kisau, he's from our Kitengela community, which is our future university community. Um, if you're able to pray for us to close. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Let's pray. 
Uh, Father and our God, we want to thank you for this opportunity that we're able to learn uh, investment, retirement, and uh, many things, Lord, we're able to learn from your servants, and we thank you for the organization of the ALU, even the, the university, and thank you for Professor Tim and all the team and even for allowing us to participate in this meeting tonight. We want to thank you and to bless each and every one of us. Thank you for the opportunity to learn once again, and we give you the glory. Thank you for each one of us who was able to join in this country and outside the country. Thank you once again for the teachers. May you continue to guide us and bless us and encourage us each day as we continue to serve you as your servants. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank, thank you, you very much. And thank you, Richard, of you. Allow me yeah, to also appreciate the members of our governance organs, the vice chair of our council, Dr. Ibli Majimbo, who was mentioned earlier, and others who may be here, and also uh, from our regulator, Commission for University Education, Dr. Morgo, and others, uh, all the other guests. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Um, bye. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye. See, see, see you on Saturday. See you on Saturday. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. 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 People. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. Bye. Person. <laughs>